Hi YouTube, this video takes me a couple hours away from home to Lake County, Colorado, which is the highest elevation county in the United States. And I'm standing here in the city of Leadville, which is one of only four cities in the US that sits over 10,000 feet above sea level. I'm riding along with the fire district here today and I've got the captain welcoming me to ride along on the engine today, which I'm super thankful for, so I really appreciate that. We're super happy to have you. Um, and this is a really unique place historically. Absolutely. So my name is Zach Slutsky and this is Leadville Lake County Fire Rescue. Uh, we've been a fire department here since 1882, a career department. Um, the history of Leadville is kind of unique. Originally, this is a mining boom town. So in the late 1800s, uh, there was four private fire departments that were kind of owned by the city fathers, if you will. Um, and they operated very similar to like the fire department you saw in the movie in Gangs of New York. Um, the way Leadville Fire came to be is in uh, the spring of 1882, there was a notorious fire on the east side on State Street. The four fire departments showed up, as the story goes, and uh, started fighting. <laughs> um, and a large portion of the town was burned down and an unknown amount of people were, were killed. Wow. Um, the next... Uh, the next day, I believe, the city fathers, um, city council at the time, decided to create a career fire department. So on May 2nd, 1882, Leadville Fire was formed. Wow. We've been a career fire department ever since then. Um, sometime in the, the 70s, the volunteer departments in the county, uh, we merged to create a unified department uh, through an intergovernmental agreement with Lake County government and the city of Leadville. So this is station one. Awesome. So, Let's Absolutely. check it out. Yeah. So this station is the second station that uh, Leadville Fire has had. The original station from 1882 is at 704 Harrison Ave and Main Street, and that's the original sign. Wow. Um, a lot of the equipment that you see here is the original switching uh, and alarm systems, um, and there used to be box alarms all around town. Wow. Yeah. Um, let me show you some apparatus here. So we're a minimum staffing of three, daily staffing of four, and we cover a district of 363 square miles. Um, there's approximately seven to 8,000 residents full-time in Lake County, but we can see upwards of 100,000 to higher um, tourist population in Colorado after that. Uh, running just over 1,000 calls a year, approximately 50% EMS. The rest is a balance of rescue, hazmat, fire, wildland, and structure. Um, this is our first new engine, uh, aptly named Engine 1. It's a Pierce. We also have, out of this house, operating a Type 3 engine or a WUI interface engine, a uh, tactical tender, and a Type 1 truck with a 105-foot stick. Our crews will cross-staff all of these pieces of equipment, uh, depending on the call type and what we're going to. Kind of a neat thing here, um, this is the original fire pole out of the original fire station uh, at 704 Harrison. It was moved when this station was created in the 70s. So that is the base. And then I'm sure you get a lot of visitors at this firehouse since it's a tourist destination. Is that Absolutely. where the patches mostly came from? Yeah, most of these are folks that have stopped through in some form or another. Um, a lot of folk, uh, a lot of firefighters come and want to talk to us. In fact, while you were here earlier today taking some shots, a firefighter from St. Louis stopped by and just kind of shot the breeze and saw our thing. I would say maybe once or twice a day somebody shows up with something cool. Um, so this is our day room, uh, kitchen. Don't spend a whole lot of time in here. Kind of a neat thing here. This is our original Colorado State Firemen's Association. It's pretty washed out, but our original number was eight. <laughs> and that's from 1923. Wow. Yep. Uh, as you can see in here, uh, firefighter's office. Doing office things. Doing office thing. Uh, officer's office. Quite a view out that window. Wow, officer gets a great view. Not too shabby, beautiful sunsets. Yeah, and these are the, uh, the legendary the, 14ers, right? Yep, this is Swatch Range, so the larger mountain on the right there is Mount Madison, and the pointier one over there is Mount Elbert. 
highest peak in Colorado. That's awesome. Not a bad place to have to do uh, office work, I guess. You got to sit in front that. of a computer. There's, there's, <laughs> the, there's worse places. Still kind of a cozy station. Um, still sleep in bunks, communal bunk room. Um, so everybody on duty sleeps here. Fortunately, we do get assigned our own bunks, so we don't have to swap every time. You get a little make it your own. Um, as you can see, all the guys kind of customize their bunks a little bit just to reflect their their personalities. Jen. This is also our locker room. Uh, we have a unisex bathroom here, washer dryer, um, shower. And then of course, fire pole. <laughs> we got to highlight the whole old fire extinguishers though oh yeah um so uh hello Stand by. Hey, Tegas, give me power. Power. That's what I thought she said. Leadville engine one. Confirming the train will arrive at the depot at 12.45. Understood. We're not going to sit up there for an hour. So. Go ahead. Stand by. Stand by, stand by. So we're here on Leadville Main Street. Uh, about to take a little walk around the Tabor Opera House. You can also take a little gander down uh, Main Street, Leadville. Uh, across the street is the famous Silver Dollar Saloon. Uh, was built in 1879, and uh, apparently Jimmy Buffett wrote some songs in there back in the day. Uh, yeah. But a little bit of a picture of the old mining architecture that is common to the industrial core of Leadville. Um, this is still a functioning opera house uh, or a show house right now, um, so definitely one of our target hazards. And, We'll take a look through, see some of the cool construction, and learn a little bit more about it. So basically what I do is I document fire departments and the unique environments that they have. And this is a very unique environment. Yeah, you're not going to Unique is a good word for the challenges in this place, that's for sure. The building was built by Horace Austin Warner Tabor in 1879. It was built in 100 days. It was one of the first buildings in town to have gas. And it was one of the first buildings in town to have electricity. Um, we originally had a gigantic coal boiler downstairs in the boiler room, which these gentlemen have seen. Um, and now we have almost no heat system, so we are actually closed after October 1st every year. Right through that one. And then take a left. And watch your head. All of you. I'll if I don't hit my head with these notes. Wow. This is probably one of the more challenging areas. We don't allow people up here for shows. Um, the infrastructure can't really support this many people in seats. The railing is really low. It's steep. And we serve alcohol. <laughs> so all of those things tell us that nobody needs to be up here. Originally, we sat 800. Now we can seat 650 but we only ever get to about 350 since we don't use the balcony. Okay. We got really close to 350 last night. It is painted canvas. Painted canvas ceiling. Painted canvas ceiling. So we're basically in a giant speaker. The stairs alone are 
Whew. It's a reminder of the elevation we're at. Yeah, it is. So this is the ballroom area here. That's the original height of the third floor. So it would, that floor level would have come all the way across and you'll be able to see that when we get to the windows in the ballroom. Okay. Whew. Wow. So when the Elks did their remodel, they actually lowered the floor by quite a few feet, almost about 10, 15 feet, put in a bar, put in a ballroom. Supposedly it's spring loaded so that when you get a bunch of people dancing on it all at the same time, you can feel it swaying. Oh. No thanks. Um, <laughs> if you go up on that bench, you can see out the window and it's, it's a good view. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Especially with the snow on the mountains right now. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> Don't particularly like it up here. Um, so originally this was like an open air promenade. So this whole space up here would have been, I think open from what we can understand because these are actually outer windows. Wow. So this would have been like, so we'd have been kind of on the elements. We'd be like standing on the roof of the building kind of. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, and of course these were, each of these was one separate room. Wow. Um, the girl downstairs in the blue dress, her name is May, and her great-great-grandmother was born up here. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. So come through here, just watch your step. I typically don't come up here because I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you like it? Um, it's dirty and there are holes in the floor and All it's right. creepy. <laughs> I'll take those as valid reasons. This door that I'm not going to open because <laughs> I'm not, um, <laughs> leads to the stage. Okay. If either any of you are feeling brave, you're welcome to do it, but it's, I'll be over here. <laughs> There's a reason I'm a tour guide and not a firefighter. Watch that first step. Yeah. <laughs> How would you guys feel about doing a primary search up here? Yeah. Well, from a risk management standpoint, obviously we have to manage uh, potential patrons of a venue that are occurring here. Yeah. It'd be extremely difficult for a single engine company to be effective operating this, but we still have to do something for the folks that are here. And you're welcome to take a look in there if you want to. Nothing really interesting. I think it's all interesting. <laughs> The brickwork is cool. Very. The brickwork is cool. The uh, leftover lath and plaster is pretty cool. Resembles a lot of our building construction, our small town residentials, as well as the, uh, the old knob and tube electrical as well. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Very. We'll go downstairs to the uh, stage and I'll show you the electric board that doesn't work anymore. Ooh, fantastic. <laughs> so we've got the catwalks are on either side and we are a hand-drawn theater. So when we want to lower set pieces, we have somebody who harnesses up and goes up to the catwalk and does the ropes. Wow. And this being de decommissioned is one of the reasons you guys like us more now. <laughs> <laughs> this was decommissioned in May. Oh, wow. This May. So it had been functional. It was live, yes. Okay. And there was a very short list of people that were allowed to touch it. Fair enough. Not me. You can see both of our fire extinguishers and we used welders gloves and it was the whole thing. Wow. So, and then that's the door that we just looked out of a second ago. Okay. Yeah. Way up there. I'm on down here. Um, be careful on these stairs. These are original. Okay. And so they are really well worn. Okay. And this brings us down to our dressing rooms. There is no running water down here. Our AV room, ladies chorus, 
our dressing room that we don't use. Um, the trap door is there in the middle. We've got some artifacts like Jim Darcy, uh, Jack Dempsey's boxing ropes, a gambling table, bathtub. Um, this is our hospitality room because performers do, do still use this space. So we have a mini fridge and a microwave. Um, leading gentlemen's, all of that. And then you can notice we've got the two heaters that warm it up down here. This is after the heaters have been on. Yeah, thanks for your cool. time to show yeah, us around. Thanks, guys. So in Leville Lake County, uh, the nearest mutual aid we can count on is at best 45 minutes away, um, sometimes up to an hour and a half away. So whatever happens in Lake County that requires a fire response today, this is pretty much what we're gonna get. Um, as such, there's a pretty high emphasis on being very competent at all general basic firefighter skills with the expectation that one of these guys is gonna have to do um, you know, all the same hundred things have to get done on a structure fire, whether you bring a hundred firefighters or you bring four firefighters. So any one firefighter for us has to do that same division of work that maybe would go to five or six guys at other departments. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, act like you know. It's going down, I'm your captain. It's going down. It's going down, I'm your captain. It's going down, I'm your I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. I'm your I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. This is how you start a fresh rap with a new track. Put your seat belts on, prepare for the impact. In fact, I did that with less than a six pack. But don't drink and drive, cause it's easy to sit that. The beat a crash dummy, don't smile, ain't nothing funny. Learned a long time ago, you catch more bees with honey. My flow is like vinegar, ooh, that's nasty. I'm a goalie in the streets, ain't nothing her getting past me. Chemicals and acid in my pen when I write it. Let it seep into your ears, brain skin, don't fight it. Relax yourself. Let your conscious be free i gave you the medicine don't blame your stress on me i kill a rapper on tv for the loot if you let me look at her i'm a Come savage on. with a style so heavy yeah. d look at me fresh as i can be casket clean always draped up to the t oh it's going down i'm your captain it's going down i'm your captain it's going down I'm your captain, it's going down. I'm your, I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. I'm your, I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. I walk inside your building, take over your whole facility. New sheriff in town, I don't know if you're feeling me. Better listen up quick, pink slip in your mailbox. Feel like you was. So if you live at sea level, this would be like doing this through a drinking straw. Um, so put a straw in, try and walk around, that's what breathing it left was like. Um, back when we first started it, of just how we originally, at least I originally thought being a new probationary firefighter that I could do a lot of work. And then we had an officer that said, okay, and then said do this, and uh, it was very humbling. So that's kind of where it came from. 
take over the world if you believe me, man. Listen to me now, believe me later, I'm your master plan. It's going down, I'm your captain. It's going down, I'm your captain. It's going down, I'm your captain. It's going down, I'm your, I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. I'm your, I'm your captain now. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. Just kind of assess your own skills so you compete against yourself over time. Do it periodically. So, uh, one firefighter uh, from Airbrake, right, is in the order of their choosing going to uh, deploy an attack line, um, deploy a 24 and a 14 foot ladder, um, establish water supply off a hydrant, force a door, uh, which we're going to simulate because we don't have a force door at this facility, and uh, mask up for time. So, something we do to just kind of keep ourselves on track. So we were talking earlier about one of the challenges and that's like, you go to a structure fire and find a structure within a structure. Absolutely, so, uh, you know, this road, this area we're driving along is, uh, this is the original Gold Strike location. So this is where some of the original old early 1800s, uh, initial pioneers of the, the mining strike here uh, built their structures. And, of course, over time, other people have come and kind of taken them and, you know, built a house around a house, essentially. Um, so we just passed a, a location that we had a, a fire a couple years ago now. Uh, but within it was the old original log cabin from the 1800s and then a modern construction stick frame house kind of around the outside. Wow. Um, extremely challenging uh, for those guys, you know, void spaces that were incredibly difficult to access, um, power that came directly off the, the utility um, oh. and was wired right into the house. And so quite a problem sometimes of uh, just accessing the seat of the fire, accessing hidden fire. So it's funny, we just passed the Charlie side of that building, looks like a building built around. Yep, absolutely, a building built around a building. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a super common thing. And, you know, we, we try our best to be familiar with it, but, uh, you know, frankly, a lot of times you you don't really discover. Uh, you can be s suspicious that the, the structure kind of holds that. Yeah. Um, but you don't really discover it until you, you're inside trying to work and um, trying to open stuff up or complete overhaul or vent. You discover a house within a house. And you said the record right now with vertical ventilation is discovering five separate roof structures? Yep. Uh, the unofficial record. I'm sure somebody will in the department counter that, but yeah. uh, that I know wow. um, is, uh, you know, not five layers of renovation roof, like five distinct different uh, roofs. roof structures Wow, um, of varying degrees. So, And then now we come uh, onto Main Street. So this is more of the commercial yep. structures. Yep. And those, this area down to the left here, that was the original layout. State Street um, and kind of the story I told about the origin story of Leadville Fire. Yeah. Um, those were the streets that took place on. You know, the private department showed up and <laughs> started brawling like gangs in New York. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, that's how Leadville Fire came to be in 1882. And I'll have to point it out on here. You pointed out to me earlier the old firehouse, which is a yeah, store or, now? Yep, a couple more blocks up. Okay. Oh, this uh, is it right here. Yep. It's the firehouse, firehouse general, general store. store. So the, the main street layout and elevation is different from back in the day. Okay. Um, but that was, the, that was the original fire station. This is quite a hill already. The camera can never do it justice. But this is a steep, steep grade. This is the kind of primary route north to south through this subdivision. To your right is an absolutely gorgeous view.
streets are now well marked. Um, house numbers are not uh, really up. Um, there's roads that don't even exist on maps. Um, and so knowing your knowing your district is a uh, is real important sometimes down here. So we're also the initial response to our water rescue in combination and partnership with our uh, local search and rescue team. So boating accidents, swift water accidents, things like that, uh, where we'll be responding to that problem as well. And then for people watching this that may not be familiar with Colorado, but they're trying to track this on the map, we're on Highway 82, yep, westbound. Westbound, and we are about to drive into the town of Twin Lakes, Colorado. Um, Highway 82 is uh, more commonly known as Independence Pass. Uh, this is a seasonal high elevation paved road uh, that connects over to Aspen, Colorado. Um, one of the famous uh, scenic drives, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Um, and probably another 20, 30 minutes worth of driving where we would crest uh, right about 12,000 feet, uh, just over 12,000 feet, just above Treeline on the Continental Divide, um, where our district stops at the boundary to Pickett County. Um, we share a boundary with Aspen Fire Protection District, uh, another one of our surrounding uh, agencies that we get to work with every now and again. Um, interesting tech rescue problem uh, is presented up there. Uh, super narrow mountain road, no guardrails, uh, and you know, at times uh, vehicles will crash and tumble a couple hundred feet over the side of the mountain. So uh, we'll have to affect a rope rescue. We're coming into Twin Lakes. So, kind of a neat little, uh, neat little idyllic uh, town. Highly recommend if you're coming through Lake County and you're driving over Independence Pass, that you stop off and visit the couple of businesses that are here. They're super wonderful. Um, go recreate around the lake. And what's the firefighting history here? Did they have their own fire department at they one time? They did. They had a volunteer fire department here, the Twin Lakes Volunteer Fire Department. Um, and that was absorbed into Leadville Lake County Fire Rescue in the uh, 70s, but I'm not sure on that. Okay. Um, and uh, another subdivision up there called Gordon Acres. Um, yeah. It went through, like most of Lake County, you know, a, a period of low population, economic hardship, um, real struggle. And, you know, starting to be rediscovered. So. Not that I want to give away secrets to YouTube, but this is one of my favorite places to come in the fall. You can kind of see the aspens are starting to look a little bit yellow, but they're going to really pop off in the next couple weeks probably. Yeah, really fun residential construction down here too, like yeah. almost log min cabins. Yeah, miners log cabins and then some balloon frames. Yep. Yeah, lots of balloon frame construction um, throughout the older parts of Leadville and really every every combination thereof. All right, YouTube, I am here with Keegan. He's the engineer here at Leadville Engine One, and he's gonna give us a tour around their Swiss Army Knife apparatus that covers this giant area. Absolutely. So, yeah, let's check it out. Right this way. So here we've got the engineer's seats, pretty standard, all the controls, and captain next to us in the back seats, we've got our medical supplies. So we have two med bags. Um, we have our regular med bag. We also have the MCI bag to the left, um, outfitted with spinal mobilization and triage tags, what have you. Um, we also keep our irons over there in the third seat compartments. Um, we have a capacity of five personnel on this engine. Right off the bat, a roll-up pump panel entirely covered, cross lays covered all that. Was that intentional by design because of where you cover? It's great to keep snow out, keeps it clean. Um, also keeps it kind of confined uh, from people touching our cross lays as well. Um, so this is our 2016 Pierce. This is our first new kind of Swiss Army knife outfitted for our all hazard response for the county. Um, with our single company department. So this is a 2016 Pierce and 1,000 gallon capacity, 1,500 gallon per minute pump, um, downgraded to 1,250 from the altitude. We have two cross lays here, 200 feet a piece, 1.88 internal diameter. 
Uh, this one is paired with a 185-50 combination nozzle. This is paired with a 15-16th smoothbore. 200 feet of two and a half paired with an inch and an eighth smoothbore as well. Um, our pump panel, rotary valves, uh, we keep our personal tools as well stashed around the engine. If you head this way, this is our engineer compartments where the driver will keep their items. Um, we have various pony sticks of 1.88, 2.5, 3-inch, and 4-inch as well. Standard selection of tools in the toolbox, uh, driver's helmets, other appliances, engineer's bag, foam adductor, additional nozzles as well. Uh, this is our 1-inch hard line, 100 feet with our wildland nozzle. Uh, we'll pull this for, you know, general rubbish fires. Up here we have our litter with a backboard in it. We have two backboards below it, and then we have two six-foot Paratech silver struts. Proceeding this way, we have our pigeonholes, each containing three additional 5,500, 45-minute Scott bottles. Tech rescue compartment, PFDs, rescue helmets. Behind that, we have um, three throw bags. They're 46 feet a piece. These are our swift water suits with booties. Two 400 foot sections of 11 mil CMC rope. Ice water rescue suits. This is our harness bag with four harnesses, um, two full body and then two seats. This is our clamshell with all of our rope rescue appliances. Extrication compartment. We have a yellow water chute that we'll use to stage our extrication tools on. Why do you use that? We use that for, especially when we're off the side of the highway um, or in the snow, keeps our tools, keeps our workspace nice. Um, what we do, what we strive for is to have our least experienced members set up all of our tools so then it's like a good menu for the engineer and the senior firefighter to pick from. And speaking of snow, how deep can it get up here? Oh, multiple feet, uh, especially off of the side of the highway where we do most of our extrications and slide offs. Uh, we're post hauling a good bit, so the litter makes it nice to shuttle tools for sure. Nice. Uh, behind this, we have an L bracket that we can pin in between the A post or B post and the um, running board of the car for, uh, for a dash roll, say. Um, here we have our footers for our two six foot Paratech Silver struts accompanied with uh, four ratchet straps and chain clusters and hooks. Um, behind this, we have an additional Pro Poly black box that houses our airlines for our two small and two large 118 PSI airbag system. We also have a dead man switch up top for the whole controls. This is our Honda GX200 extrication pump, 10,500 PSI. We have pre-plumbed 100 foot reels, plumbed to our spreaders, and our cutters, so our engineer will operate this, um, or the senior firefighter will operate this as we cut. Um, we have also a complement of a small, small, medium, and large ram. We have remote lines. These are 31 feet, four inches a piece for if we need to take it off the side of the highway in the litter, um, if it's further than 100 feet. This is our J box. This has four outlets on it. It's 203 feet stretch um, that is plumbed into the generator of the engine. 15 pieces of cribbing down here and two step chocks for simple vehicle stabilization. Heading around the back side, we have our hydrants bag compartment. In our hydrant bag, it is somewhat unique in the way that we have Leadville thread. So these approximate two and a half inch coupling female is unique to our Leadville hydrants. So our two oldest, the Holly and the Matthews, sometimes you'll need it on a Pacific State hydrant, most of the time not. Um, it adapts it to a standard two and a half inch um, coupling so then we can use our gate valves as well. And is there enough of a difference between those hydrants when you walk up you know or do you have to look for a label name? There are visual indicators uh, in their shapes. Um, also their sizes, you know we have a few different Hollies that are just 
double barrel hollies, two dog ears, um, there's no steamer. So sometimes you need to get crafty with that. Um, our water system here is a high pressured, low volume system and we have wooden mains. So even in our square mile of city, we'll still opt to take our tender as well. Most of the time. Also have our hydrant wrench, a few other additional appliances, another um, gate valve, and then our two um, four and a half inch and five inch to storts connections. So we can adapt that to our supply hose. 8,000 pound capacity worn winch that can plug into any of the one of our four 9,000 pound rated hitch receivers. DeWalt bag of tools, standard complement of drill, impact drill, this is our um, pneumatic um, air chisel with a few other air um, attachments so we can you know, fill bike tires and fill engine tires and stuff like that. Um, corded Sawzall as well. Up top here with our supply bed, we have a thousand feet of four inch and then we have two 500 foot sections of three inch. Um, there are adapters placed in there in case we need to fully dress a hydrants. Um, if the fully dress is not necessary, we can remove those for a longer lay and adapt. We have a 250 foot three inch pre-connect line with a gated Y that reduces down to inch and a half couplings. So we'll use that for our driveway lay or long stretches at a school. Bike pole compartment here. Houses six, eight, and 12 foot pike poles with our wooden handles. Our blitz fire here. And then this is our saw compartment. We have our steel 460 Magnum Rescue and then we have our K12 saw. This is our gas fan here. And then our salvage cover underneath it is our Dolmar for a two stroke mix, bar oil, and then straight gas. Underneath are additional K12 blades and chains. Up top here on the ladder rack, standard NFPA 1901 ladder package with a 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof and a 10 foot attic ladder. We have two sticks of 10 foot of four inch hard suction as well. Uh, these guys also hold three more additional 5,500, 45 minutes Scott bottles. This is our tool compartment, bolt cutters, wire cutters, door spreader or a fan hanger have you, um, and a fire mole. From the top down, we've got our vehicle unlock stylet, our closet hook, pick head axe, and bat axe. These are our high rise packages, so we have 100 feet of two and a half with a ball valve and then behind it is 200 or is 100 feet of 1.88 pawn. Um, it has integrated 15 16 tip and then we threw on an inch and an eighth tip after that as well um, to protect the threading and also have it available for our two and a half inch bale. Here are our bailout bags. These are 60 feet of 10 mil rope. Behind that um, we also have our gated Y attachments for our sandpipe operations. Um, and then a Denver tool and a big breaker bar. Over here we have our complement of elevator keys and our shove knife. And this leather sheath right here, we have our K tool with our carry key and additional shove knife. And then in our yellow package, this is our vehicle unlock kit with plastic wedges and the small um, BP attachment to make a gap in a door. This is our rehab cooler. Behind it is two C-spine immobilization bags. This is our fit seat riders uh, air pack. And then behind it is our RIT bag. Down here we have our uh, water can and then our ABC extinguisher. Two stop signs for traffic control that most of the time the engineer will be controlling traffic on the highway. Um, we've got our floor dry here, electric fan as well, and then a large broom for cleaning up the highway incidents. This is the other side of the pump panel. Litter is accessible from both sides. Um, the two six foot Paratech Silver struts are 
also accessible from both sides. Same with the two additional backboards. Um, cross lays are modified Minuteman. They can be pulled either way. Ideally, this blue smoothbore cross lay will be pulled from the officer side. Um, if not, if you go around the other side, this is what you'll see. And then you can just pull it left-handed. Um, this is also the backside of our two and a half, which we have outfitted to pull left-handed from the backside as well. So this small pull tab, and then you have your two supplied dog ears. Um, two and a half inch intake, and then our four inch Stortz intake that will pair with our supply hose. Additional spanner wrenches and hydrant wrench here on the left. Cones for traffic control, and then our New York hook here. If you peek in the cab, this is where we keep our box lights as well as our irons. So easily accessible for our third seat firefighter. The general use med bag is directly in front of him or her that's riding. And then on top of the central doghouse, we'll keep our helmets and other additional personal belongings if they're not kept in the cabinet. Up top, we have three level B hazmat suits. So those will be available for us. And we have five ARA triple F five gallon buckets of foam as well. Um, in our dunnage, we have an additional variety of rural water supply appliances um, for when we need to get crafty with the tender and dump tanks. And then a standard complement of shovels and brooms. So we have our um, 800 radio and our VHF radio system. The tick um, packs are all in the seats. Knox box key mounted in between the legs for easy access upon and routes. Um, and then we don't have any computer for en routes or directions. Um, one thing that we really get after is we make sure that as soon as you're hired, you start learning the district immediately. Um, so we kind of stray away from looking at um, the computer that would be in front of us. Don't worry about it, I'm engineering right now. I'll hold it down. You're doing a little watch work. You look good cooking. Thank you. Thanks. So we have uh, three pork loins in the oven right now. I'm going to do uh, so, some sauteed potatoes and onions just because we didn't have time to throw them in the oven for as long. Um, and then Shikami's making some German cucumber salad. What's special about the potatoes? Um, so the ones that are already cut in here were grown in Leadville right at the front door um, where flowers should have been growing, but potatoes grew instead. Unlikely. No, it's okay. Not my chair, Unlikely. not my problem. Unlikely. Don't worry about it. I'll close these nah, for too you, many too. cooks in the kitchen. I'm the only cook, so get out of here. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Don't worry about it. I got it. We'll uh, forget about it, eh? All right, then. I have to It's just after sunset here in Leadville, and unfortunately I have to cut my ride along a little short before I get a chance to enjoy the dinner upstairs that the crew is having. It's a two hour drive for me back home and I have to work in the morning, but I just wanna say thank you to Leadville Lake County Fire Rescue for welcoming me to come and have this ride along experience. Oh, yeah. Folks can donate to the Tabor a couple of ways. They can send us checks in the mail. They can go on our website. Um, it's www.taboroperahouse.net, and we are always happy to accept donations and coming to our shows and coming to our tours from Labor Day to October 1st, or Memorial Day to October 1st is always going to help. <laughs>